Revolution fam, it's Alicia Michelle. I'm so excited today because yet again, I am not alone and I am being joined by one of the contestants for Germany's national selection this year. And Unser lead for Liverpool, that's that's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going with. It's Patty Gertie. How are you feeling today? Hey, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm feeling very good today. Thank you. I hope you too. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling good and honestly, I'm feeling better because basically I'm starting my day off with this conversation, you know, time right. difference and everything. So this oh, is what the time start. is it? It is 9 a.m. I I'm kicking oh, off my God. day. My day strong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to ask, like, you know, Germany, I've heard, you know, really has a, a little bit of excitement for Eurovision. Unlike some of the other countries in Europe, Germany really is like, yes, like Eurovision, like we love this. We so, we're so excited. So like now you're participating in the national selection. You know, did you dream of this as a child of like maybe possibly having the opportunity to represent Germany at Eurovision? Well, first of all, I don't know which artist doesn't dream about playing on the biggest stage for music. It's a very big thing. Come and on. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> and then, of course, um, I don't know if you remember that, but Eurovision once came to Düsseldorf, to my hometown, home city. <laughs> so uh, I was about, I don't know, 12, 13 or so when basically around the corner Eurovision happened and then I remember you know going into school the next day all the blackboards were full of writings 12 points Germany Lena we love you <laughs> so yeah it, it was always a big thing <laughs> well I, I love that because you know I obviously take Eurovision so seriously you know I do seriously in a, in a fun way still but mm -hmm. I, I I love the song contest and I I couldn't imagine having something parallel to that in the United States I think it would be so cool to really have that and and this long history but I, I want to take it back a little bit because you you took us back to 2010. But now I well, you know, with Lena winning to a certain degree, bringing um, bringing your vision to German soil, I guess. But can you remember maybe like your first ever performance, like your first time performing live in front of a crowd? Oh my God! To be honest, as a very small child already, I sang in you know like uh, in church at Christmas and <laughs> stuff like that. So. I'm not sure if I can remember the first one because that started pretty early. <laughs> well, I love that. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that because my first performance, I mean, I'm not famous. I'm not I'm not on your level, but my first performance was at church at midnight mass. I remember that. And I remember like wow. we were like sleeping. So it was me and another like little boy. And so we were like in the choir pit sleeping because it was midnight mass. And then like being <laughs> woken up like, okay, it's time for you to go on and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like... but you know what? I remember my first uh, gig with my very first rock band, which I started when I was like 10 or so. I was a singer in a rock band. And that was, I remember um, we we uh, performed the song Knocking on Heaven's Door and everybody went like this. And it was a big success for us because the whole crowd was with us. <laughs> Oh, I, lo I, I love that. I love that. Um, so I, I would say, so now you're throwing your hat in the ring to represent Germany at Eurovision this year. H how did you find out about the national selection? Were you asked? Did you apply? What was that process like? Uh, no, so I wasn't asked. And I maybe have to add that I'm an independent artist so i do not ha have any big labels behind me yet all i have is my youtube channel that i started 2016 and just by accident some of my videos went by went viral because nobody knew about this weird instrument i'm playing which is called a hurdy-gurdy by the way <laughs> so that was a new thing on uh on youtube and uh yeah i just apply it the normal way actually two ways this year one was the uh, TikTok application where you were just supposed to uh, post uh, like basically the chorus of your song on TikTok with the hashtag Liverpool. and then the other way was the normal um, application through their website 
where you just fill in a couple of questions. Who are you? Why do you want to be here? <laughs> so like that. Um, so yeah, and then they invited me to come sing so they could check on me if I can actually sing or if it's just all autotune. <laughs> and then they were like, uh, yeah, okay, uh, see you soon. <laughs> So I, one thing I've noticed in following Eurovision all of these years is that some music scenes uh, in certain countries are actually kind of small and people know each other. Did you know any of uh, the folks that are going to be competing at Unserlied? And and if you didn't, like, are you are you kind of excited? Have you all met at all? Uh, just curious about that. Uh, yes, I knew Lord of the Lost because, as I told you, like I started uh, singing in rock bands and metal bands a long time ago, and um, I, you know, like I don't know, I I love too many genres, but metal for sure is one of my favorite genres. So I know the whole scene. I've been around for a while, and I don't know them personally yet, but I knew Lord of the Lost because they're quite big in their gothic rock, whatever they're doing, <laughs> mixture. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait to meet them personally, like in person, finally. Yeah, yeah Lord of the Lost is definitely bringing us something interesting. They have uh, style. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I have to say, I think the whole selection for Germany, I mean, Germany has tons of options this year. And I do think your entry really does stand out even in the pack. And so I'm sure you have explained this numerous times. So I'm sorry to probably ask you again, but you oh, got to talk to me about the hurdy gurdy. Okay. Yes. What is like, we got to talk about the hurdy gurdy. Okay. <laughs> okay. No problem. I have it right here. This is what it looks like. So, um, just to explain from the beginning, my name is Patty Gurdy. Patty being my nickname and Gurdy being the name of my instrument, which has its roots in the medieval times. So it is a, uh, I could say a typical German folk instrument, but of course it was also a typical folk instrument in other Central European countries, such as France. And uh, the interesting thing about it is that um, it works very similar, like a, like a violin, actually. It's a stringed instrument. So how you play it is not by the, the stick bow, you know, <laughs> but with a wheel bow, which is inside like it hangs like halfway inside the instrument can you see it here when i turn it oh yes oh wow you, okay it's actually it's very delicate like it reacts to the tiniest of movements so wow. it's really just a wheel bow and then you have the strings on top of it and okay. um you have different kinds of strings for example the melody strings you know how on a on a violin you play with your with your left hand you basically press your fingers on the strings to shorten the strings Correct. so you can make melodies and here you have mechanical keys for that a little bit like on the piano okay okay yeah so with one hand you you turn the bow and with the other one you press on the mechanical keys but then because this would be too easy right we have to add other strings too <laughs> So this instrument actually also has bass strings where you can put a, a, a deep drone tone under the melodies that you're playing. So it gives you that uh, bagpipe feel. And then also another special thing is it also has rhythm strings right here on top. And uh, Oh my goodness. <laughs> and they so work you can be like works. a one woman show with this basically. You got it. Yes, exactly. You got it. And you actually make the rhythms by giving impulses while you turn. And I have to put it around, around my waist to actually show it to you how it sounds. So this is the bass. Not sure if the microphone picks it up. And then the rhythm. So I, I am works. I am transported. <laughs> I am I am now gonna be trying. I have a daughter. I am now gonna be trying to go, girl. You can be your own one woman show with a hurdy gurdy. Yes. <laughs> we're 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 buying you one. I it, I felt like I was in like Lorena 
McKinnon. <laughs> oh, yeah, she has a pretty good too something. Yes, yeah, so you know I, I love it. You're saying something very right there. You can be a one woman band because it's actually more than one instrument. It's basically, basically it's a, a small orchestra. And the great thing about it is you can sing to it at the same time and move to it. Like, right, it's horrible because <laughs> that's perfect. like one thing. Yeah, one thing about a piano, if you're sitting to the piano, it's, you yeah. know, and that's why they had to make the guitar, you know, for, for folks to, <laughs> to bring that keyboard is to yeah. the front. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I so it's something so hypnotic about that sound and mm -hmm. and I think it's one of the things that makes your vision such an interesting competition because we get the opportunity to hear sort of like these different genres and hear some native language every so often. So that makes me kind of think, you know, what were your influences like? I know you talked about loving metal music, uh but what kind of artists were you listening to growing up? Yeah. Oh, okay. One big one is Amy Lee from Evanescence. So that is a rock artist. And the thing I loved about her that she's such a good pianist and she sings at the same time, which is actually a big inspiration for me and got me started on trying this because I, you know, I learned piano, I learned guitar, flutes and so on. And like you said, there was always something with these instruments that made it so, you know, I can't move on stage or, you know, when I play the flute, I cannot sing at the same time. And always something that bugged me and was like, ah, it's not the right one yet, you know? And then, um, uh, yeah, so Amy Lee basically first inspired me to try piano and singing at the same time. And later, when I found the Gertie, I was like, oh my God, I found it. <laughs> I found my answer. <laughs> and the sad thing is this instrument was extinct in Germany. Wow. Yeah, in the last, in wow. the last hundred years, it was uh, dead for about 50 years or so. And uh, people brought it back. And I think in France, it is still being played traditionally. So there it was not extinct. But in Germany, it was. And it's so sad because it's such a great instrument. And this should never happen again. So <laughs> let's give it the big stage. <laughs> I, I, I don't hate the concept of that. And I, I mean, again, it's about bringing sort of these interesting sounds. I think bringing things to life on the stage. And so I know you can't tell us everything. But maybe you can give us a little teaser of what we can expect to experience from you on the stage. So you don't have to give anything away, but just like, what do you want folks to maybe feel when they see the performance okay. going down? Yes. So um, the thing is, my song has a very uh, personal quite a dramatic backstory which i will get to in a second so of course i want to tell that story um but then also i, I keep joking about it and people keep joking about it to me about the wind machine because i actually love having you know a floor fan or a wind machine on stage because if i did not have that my hair would get caught in the crank so i actually need one so this is not a secret i will have a wind machine <laughs> Um, and about the story to just um, explain to you what we're gonna try to, you know, which story we're gonna try to tell on stage is <clears throat> the the reason why I I, um, I wrote this song is actually, I don't know if you heard of it, um, my home and my um, music studio got flooded in 2021 and I, I lost my, um, yeah, I lost my home and, and the basis of my work, you know, my cameras were flooded all my guitars are gone yeah uh, so uh, that was quite a dramatic thing it was really terrible going through that but here comes the catch because as soon as i told my fan community about it uh, they were like oh my god for sure we help you and then within no time i was able to build myself a new studio again Oh, so wonderful. having this base is like the safety net of people that are just there to catch you was such an amazing experience because if you if you go through something terrible like that it's you know it can actually really it really hurt your psyche if you don't get caught by the right people and I had those people and I feel like everybody deserves to have those people right so I kind of wanted to give something back to them now and give them something which you know, gives them hope and this this uh, idea of rebirth. You know, you can get through the darkest time. It's not over. 
we can change everything and we can invent our future on our own. So this is basically what Melodies of Hope is about and the whole background of that. So, yeah. Uh, that's beautiful. I, I, I wonder what music maybe are you listening to now that you kind of, uh, that gives you inspiration, uh, gives you a lift, maybe other artists or other songs, maybe a song that's stuck in your head that you can't get out. Yeah, so right now, basically. Just, uh, okay, I just re, um, I, I just found uh, Stromae again. It, he was a, he's a Belgian yeah. artist that was around like 10 years ago. And now he just came back and popped up again with an amazing album, which when I hear that album, I cannot sit still. He makes me dance like no one else can. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, Stromae this definitely. Is a fun little thing. Yeah, Shramay definitely great. I think a lot of people have been poking him saying, why don't you represent Belgium, Eurovision? You know, come on, help them out. Maybe give them a win or something. So so Shramay has definitely been a floating around in, in conversations of, you know, maybe representing uh, Belgium one day. I, I want to ask, do you have any advice? Because I mean, you're you're like, what would we call like a multi-instrumentalist? You sing. Uh, what advice do you have for creatives out there? Mm, okay. Wow, it's very different. You know, there are so many ways to make music and it really depends on the genre too. So it's so hard to give one advice. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't give the same advice to the uh, other, you know, to a different person. So I think first of all, I think what is always true is get the message of the song or of the music across. So however you do it with whatever instrument, feel it and then say it, basically. I think that's my message. Well, that's beautiful. And I hope a whole bunch of creatives are able to watch this and see how you've, you've been resilient. <laughs> you've resurrected an instrument in Germany. We're bringing it possibly to the Eurovision stage. We will see. <laughs> <laughs> We, we we will see. But thank you so much for talking with me today. Thanks for this nice interview. It was nice to spend time with you.